So I'm going to show how to put a transition strip. I call them transition strip. Uh, some people just by default call them Schluter strips. But it's aluminum transition that goes on the side of your tile, kind of finishes off um, your tile. And so if you don't have a bull nose, you may want to decide to use one of these. And if you follow the instructions, <laughs> which I generally try, try to do the best I can unless they don't make any sense, then it tells you that this should be attached to your wall prior to putting the tile up. Boy, there are some book soldiers out there, I swear. When I showed this on another video a while back, uh, people were <laughs> people were talking about, no, you're supposed to split the shooter strip before you put the tile. No, 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 you can't do that because you see you've got gaps that are varying sizes. Not every wall is created the same. So if you start putting your Schluter strip and put it straight to the wall without knowing the thickness of what all your tile is going to be, your, your SOL. Um, so what I do is I back off my thin set probably a good inch or so off of the side. So I thin set everything here and back butter and all that stuff, but I don't put any thin set so there's a void. And then I take a little putty knife and I scrape off any thin set that I might have pushed down to get out to that point so that I have a void with every single one of my tile. This, this thing just slides in all the way from top to bottom. Um, so the same putty knife, I come in here retroactively and I push in a bunch of thin set inside of here as deep as I can get it. And um, then, I, then I put my sliver inside there and then I adjust it where I want it because sometimes, as I said, you know, you want to be flush, you want to be flush here. So then it's going to get a little um, shim and uh, that shim will stay there till it dries and then the excess will get crowded off. So same thing is over here. Um, yeah, all the way down, it's flat and straight with my strip. And uh, it's loose right now until I put some thin set in there. That's it. So here's a problem with that. If you try and attach it to your wall, you have a flat surface. You have the flat surface of your wall and you have the flat edge of your trim. Edging, if you will. Um, the problem is, by the time you have your thin set, your back butter, your tile, and you got thin set trailed out on your wall, you're not going to have a flat edge. If you do, you're very fortunate, very lucky, and you're probably doing it wrong. Because you have this gap here, anyway, the easiest thing that I've learned over time, because I've never stuck these to the wall, because I never read the directions. I never watched a video on how to put one of these, but it kind of just made sense. What you do when you trail out your thin set and your, your back butter and your tile, you leave a gap of about an inch. This is about an inch, more or less, by the time it gets up to the edge of the transition here to here. It's about maybe three quarters, five eighths of an inch. Um, so I come out about an inch, maybe an inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter, and I don't leave anything there. This is a void. And if I could show you the inside, which I can't, if I show you the inside, you would see that there is a definite void that goes in that deep. And as I'm doing my tile, I have one of these little pieces that's kind of just in my toolbox all the time. And I slide it in there and I make sure that there's no thin set. Because trying to knock out that thin set after it's dried is very, very difficult. So I just slide that, that strip, that little sample strip in there. Make sure there's no thin set. If there is, I get a little knife or something in there and I, I get all that stuff out. So when there's a void there, people kind of freak out. I don't want a void. I don't know why. I don't want a void. Because if there's a void, there's going to be a problem. <laughs> there's not going to be a problem. So watch what I do. I got my thin set and I'm pushing it in there. I got a six, six inch blade and I'm just pushing it in there as far as I can until it just wants to stop. Now, if you can see clearly, uh, I don't know if you can see clearly, but when I push that in, it pushes in about an inch and a half. And so, because there's an inch and a half going on there, 
I have no compunction whatsoever that my void that I created on purpose is intentionally filled with thin set. It's just a very, very easy, easy process to make it foolproof. And so the only other thing that I suggest you do is if you have a straight line. When you start your tile on your wall, whether you start from the top, the middle, the bottom, it doesn't matter. Each and every single one of your tile must be cut to exactly the same size. There can't even be, you know, a little sixteenth of an inch off because that's going to show up when you put your transition on. You can actually tell when you've gone in enough because it wants to pop back out again. Then you just take off a little excess that you have when you slop around. Then the final to do is that when you put it inside, it just naturally will be difficult to put in, which is what you want, because you know you've got enough thin set in there to make this really work well. And as you go down, you push it in, push it in, push it in, and it wants to resist you, which is a good thing. And there you go. And that's as easy as it gets to make that happen. And then you come along with the sponge, and you just wipe off the excess. And you can do it off the wall too, if what you're doing on the final wall is gonna impede with this extra thin set, you just wipe it off the wall. See, it wants to pop back out again, I gotta push it in. And so what I generally will do to keep that in there, two things. I'll run a screw about every, I don't know, foot and a half, two feet. Kind of sideways, kind of toenail a screw. And when I toenail a screw sideways like that, it pushes that transition up against the tile. And then I run another one about another foot down, foot and a half or so, da da da. Uh, another way to keep it in place and to pop it out where you want, because I want this to go right there. I can use a shim. So these are just plastic shims that I get when I'm doing tile work. And I just stick the shim in there and it keeps it right in place. And you can put as many shims there as you think you need. And that just holds it in place until uh, the whole thing dries up. The screws or the shims or combination of the both will work great. And that way you have a nice finished solid transition and any excess room that you have here you can either caulk or you can fill in with grout. In this case, I think they're going to put shiplap across here. I think it's going to butt up against here and almost hide the transition anyway. Um, but that's, that's the easiest way I know to put transition strips inside where you need them. Hope that helped you out. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then subscribe. Hit that button and subscribe. I make nothing off of YouTube, so please be a Patreon member. I'm going to post a link down below to my Patreon account 
and you can donate a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars a month. Just pledge that that on a monthly basis. That will help me produce more videos and and content so that you can watch and learn from my channel. And donate at least fifty dollars if you're going to call. If you're going to call for advice, donate to my PayPal, please. Donate first, and then feel free to call me or email me uh, for advice. Otherwise, business calls only, please.